Give the Lord praise this morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Show this praise team, them leading us in worship. Show them how much you appreciate them this morning. Thank God. Thank God. Praise God. Thank God for Brother Donnie. He is doing a great job. We miss, we miss Jonathan and Tiffany and Paul and Bridget and their family, but uh, we thank God that Donnie is covering the bases this morning. Paul is uh, transmitting our Facebook Live uh, via home, and uh, we're living in the days of the virus, aren't we? Everything changes and everything is moved around, but we thank God that we can still do this. Amen? Thank God for the radio broadcast and all of those things that we're doing to try to get the word out. The podcast, broadcast, Brother Paul does that. And we thank God for that. Thank you for praying for my dad. Uh, he's back at home. My stepmother said that he is improving every day. Um, we, he's still got a long way to go. He has a lot of uh, stroke-like symptoms from the brain bleed. But thank God it wasn't an aneurysm because the surgeon said it had required surgery to save his life there was no way that he would have probably pulled through due to his age he uh, january the 14th i believe 2021 he'll be 84 and then his other underlying uh conditions health conditions so he wasn't a good candidate for surgery i guess god knew that and uh so there was really nothing else to do but just uh, the doctor the report was that the body usually absorbs these things up itself over time. That's what we're praying for. And uh, we're just hoping a little more improvement every day. He's walking with his walker some more today. And I just thank God for your prayers because, um, you know, I honestly, as I left and was over uh, in Crossgates, the helicopter between Crossgates and um, Airport Road on I-20, Going to the hospital trying to beat the helicopter there. The helicopter flew over my head. And, you know, you can't help but think, I hope Daddy made it, you know. Because at first they thought it was an aneurysm that had bursted uh, at the other hospital. But when he got there, he was alive. And, you know, you have to thank God for every little thing. So I praised the Lord. When I got there, they said, he's alive. He's, he's waiting on a room. And, um, and God's just giving him improvement. We just pray. Thank you for praying. Look, don't ever take prayer for granted. There's power in the name of Jesus when the people of God lift up their prayers to heaven. And uh, I know the power of prayer in my own personal life when people pray. And you know, it's so good when you can't pray yourself. Daddy couldn't pray for himself because of of uh, the his uh, brain bleed, he he didn't know where he was. He was confused, uh, but there were people that touched God for my dad, and um, he's at home and he's alive, and we believe that he's going to make a full recovery. That's what we're trusting God for. And we'll take every day of improvement we can get. Sometimes you just got to go all the way through, right, saints? I mean, you just got to believe God all the way through it. It looks dark and. And it looks gloomy, but let me tell you, God is still on the throne. And he can turn things around when it doesn't look like it can be done by medical science or by any other way. But God's a miracle working God. And I hope we can believe God for our needs today because that's encouraging. That's, that's, that, 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 those stories, those reports should, should carry your faith to another level. Amen? So whatever you're going through, you just trust the Lord. And when you can't pray, other people will intercede for you. And God hears the intercessory prayers of His people. Amen. Thank you so much. Today, I want to look at our subject we've been talking about, worship. And worshiping in spirit and in truth. And when we do that, the fruits of the Spirit are manifested. And the importance of of those those fruits being manifested, the fruit of the Spirit, and what it does in the lives of people who experience God's fruit. It's not our fruit. We know the works of the flesh are, are there, there's nothing good about the works of the flesh. But I'll tell you, the Spirit still works. 
There are spiritual gifts and there are spiritual fruits. And when we worship in spirit and in truth, all of those things will be evident and manifested among the true worshipers who worship God in spirit and in truth. So we're going to read John 4, 23. John 4, 23 and 24. The Bible says, Jesus spoke these words, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit. Everybody shout, in spirit. And in truth. Everybody shout, in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is a spirit. And they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit. Everybody shout, in spirit. And in truth. Praise the Lord. Let's make our confession together. I will believe God's Word. I will be who it says I can be. I will do what it says I can do. To God be the glory forever and forever. And everybody shouted, Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated today. The word gentleness is the fruit of the Spirit we're going to emphasize today. When you do a study on the fruit of the Spirit, you can see in our language they kind of interchange. Our English words kind of are used to describe uh, the fruit of the Spirit over and over again. Goodness is a fruit of the Spirit. But then when you talk about gentleness, the, the word for gentleness that Jesus was talking about that Paul uses in the Greek, uh, is actually in the Greek um, a little bit different. It includes goodness of heart, but it actually speaks of usefulness. That is the original word. And kratados is uh, the word in the Greek that Paul uses. It means, it means usefulness there. And it is also a gentleness and goodness of heart. And so when you, when you look at gentleness, it kind of overlaps with the, the fruit of goodness, but it's different in the, in the original language. So I want you to notice what Paul is talking about, that the Holy Ghost will manifest when we worship God in the Holy Ghost, in the Spirit, and in the truth, that gentleness, this word gentleness in English, um, krestados or krestades in Greek it is a goodness that is in the heart and he's not talking about you he's talking about him he's talking about God and he is talking about God planting that seed in us so it didn't come from us it come from him and it is planted by God in the spirit born believer and that's the true worshiper. Jesus said the, word, the time is now, is coming and it is now, where the spirit-born believer, the true worshiper, uh, shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. We will worship Him with the Spirit, being spirit-born, with the fruit of the Spirit planted by God in us. And we're not worshiping like us. We're worshiping like God wants us to worship, that we're not capable of, save we have the help and the presence of the Holy Ghost in our life. The Bible says, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ lives within us. And it is He that has planted these fruit in our life. When we worship Him, there's a manifestation of His miracle fruit. This is miracle fruit. This is not man's fruit. This is heaven's fruit. This is God's fruit that is, that is planted and grown in our lives by the presence of His Spirit in our lives. And when we worship Him in the Spirit of God, and in the truth of God, the Bible tells us there is a, a miraculous thing that is manifested in our worship. And all of a sudden, 
The fruit of the Spirit is, 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 is manifested and revealed to all that are present where that kind of worship is being lifted up. And that's where sinners are introduced to the Spirit of God. I don't want them to know me. I want them to know Him. And I want them to know the Him in me, right? The God in me, the God in you. I don't want them to know me because the Bible says there's none of us good. No, not one, not one. So I don't want them to meet me. I want them to meet Jesus in me. And He does that by the manifestation of the presence of His Spirit. And when we worship Him, people meet God. When people worship God, when people worship our Father in spirit, and in truth, we're worshiping in the flesh, you're going to get fleshly results. But if we worship Him in the Spirit, we'll get spiritual results. Amen? I want spiritual results. I don't want fleshly results. There's a lot of flesh that's going on today, but I want spirit. And you've got to understand, it's a choice that we make. We have to decide. This is what He said. Galatians 5, 25. If we live in the Spirit, he says, if you are Spirit-born children of God, Jesus said you must be born again. That's what he told us. John 3. He told us we must be born again, and we're born of water and the Spirit, right? And one teacher taught that the water represents the natural birth, the flesh birth. You have to be born that way in order to be the house of, for the Spirit, right? You are, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Without a body, you don't have a temple for Him to live in. Isn't that something? So the what came first? Adam came first. The natural man came first. So you had to be born first. Now, this is what I've been taught. But then he says, you must be born of water. You has, must be born of Adam. That means natural birth. And of the Spirit. That's nothing to do with Adam. That's the last Adam. How many know who the last Adam is? How many know him? How many know him? His name is Jesus. Paul said that's the last Adam. <laughs> He's heavenly. First Adam was earthly. So I've got Adam number one. You're looking at him. But when Adam number two, Jesus Christ, went to the cross, died, was born, a supernatural virgin birth, lived a supernatural life, died on the cross, buried and rose again. Now, now this old Adam body houses the number two Adam, the second Adam, the last Adam, and that is Jesus. How many know Jesus, by way of his spirit, lives in this old Adam body? Amen? Amen? So I don't want this Adam body to control what I do in worship. I want the last Adam. I want his spirit to control what I do in worship. So he says, if we live in the spirit, if we're born again of the spirit of God through faith in Jesus Christ, let us also walk in the spirit. He is saying, this is a command. If you are spirit born, choose to walk as a spirit born child of God. Now listen, if we are born of the spirit, and we choose to walk in the Spirit, then we can also choose to worship in the Spirit. I can choose not to. Adam says, you don't feel good today. But Jesus says, lift up holy hands and worship my name, for I am worthy. The Holy Ghost comes, rises up, and takes control. You have to let him, and he begins to speak to your mind. And then we have to make a decision. Am I going to go this way or am I going to go that way? How many know you get to make the decision, right? Just like you chose Jesus, you got to choose to walk after him and you got to choose to worship him. And he says the people that are true worshipers shall choose to worship me. He will choose to worship God. He will choose to worship his Father in spirit and in truth. And so we have to understand, I have to choose to worship him. And when I do, something miraculous happens. The fruit of gentleness is manifested. I want to look a little bit further at this word we call gentleness. Kratotis is, is a powerful word. We talked about how that it, it actually means 
in its original form, it was used to talk about goodness of heart. And then it's also it's used to talk about what our word would describe as kindness. So we use the English word to describe uh, kratotes as, as goodness. And it's several English words, goodness and kindness. How many know God is a good God? God's a good God. Kratotes is God is a good God. And God has a good heart. How many know God doesn't have a corrupt heart? We were born with a corrupt heart. But the Spirit of God, hallelujah, transformed our life. And now we have the heart of God. We have the mind of the Spirit. We have the presence of the Holy Ghost. When He saved us and we received His Spirit into our life. And we're born again. And now the Spirit controls my worship. When I allow Him to control my worship. Why? Because He's changed my heart. The Bible says... The double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So I have the potential to have two hearts. That word literally means two-hearted man. Okay? So just like you got Adam and you got the last Adam, Jesus, you get to choose what heart you're going to go after. The corrupt heart that's wicked in all of its ways, it's still there. I, I, do you still see flesh? Right? So the potential is there for me to go after that. There's a lot of Christians going after that. I saw a guy, his name is Todd White, I believe it is. He pastors. I don't even know where he pastors. He went to a beer fest. <laughs> he went, he's, he's the guy that's got all the dreadlocks all tied up on his head. I mean, I don't know how he carries that head full of hair. I wish I had that kind of hair. I mean, I'd wear it in dreadlocks too if I could grow it like him. I mean, he's growing it like he's in a greenhouse. I mean, it is just unbelievable. He's got it pulled up, and those dreadlocks are coming. I want to tell you what, that guy's full of the Holy Ghost. When he opens his mouth, he has been with God. He's an amazing man. He wears, uh, I don't call them short pants. I call them knee pants. They go, they go all the way down to his knees. He's a big buff guy. And he goes out where I don't go. He don't, I don't go to beer fest. Do you go to beer fest? Don't raise your hand. Please don't. I would lose all confidence in you if you do. But, but when they see him coming, they say, yeah, he's one of us. Well, he got to witness, and he carried a team of witnesses with him. And they witnessed about Jesus, and they were staggering drunk. Man, they was enjoying their beer at that beer fest. And he said, about halfway through it, Brother Josh, he came back, and he said, I'm, my heart's broken. He said, I see a lot of Christians here at this beer fest. He says, that's not very Christian to be here at this beer fest. Well, he was there, but he wasn't partaking. To be drunk, many of the, those that said he was Christian, he knew a lot of them, I'm sure. He said, maybe some of them attended his church. That's right where they need to be, right? 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 And if they're staggering drunk, they need Jesus, right? And they need deliverance, right? So, so he, he saw the corruptness of some Christians following that double-mindedness, the wrong mind. Bible says we have the mind of Christ, but but the Bible also says we can have a double mind. We can live in 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 two minds or two hearts. He says a double-hearted person, a double-minded person, is unstable in all his ways. Why? Because he's this way in church, and he and he's that way at the beer fest, right? And so he's that th- you got to choose. He said we we ha- that's why he said we have to crucify the flesh. Does that really mean put it on the cross? Spiritually speaking, it's emphasizing that we are dead to the control of that man in our life. We have power to overcome it, but we have to choose to follow the heart of God. And so now as spirit-born people, we have a choice. We can follow the heart of God through the power of the Holy Spirit and, and let the fruit of gentleness... It, it, is, it is a powerful word. It's, it's God's heart in us. And we have to choose to follow His heart, not our own ademic nature. And so we go after God. So there's a lot of people not choosing the right heart. They, they, they've got Jesus. They were born again, but they're not walking in Him. And then they get away from God and go astray like the prodigal did. He was a son, but he wasn't. Where he needed to be with God. Right? 
And praise God, he came back home. But look what he had to go through before he came back home. I don't want to have to go through what I don't have to go through. Look, living for God, you go through enough, right? You can be right where you need to be and still face hell. Right on your doorstep. But God gives us the power to do that. But when we worship God in spirit and in truth, it is us going after the heart of God. We're going after the fruit of the Spirit, which is the heart of God being manifested in our worship when we cross over from the flesh and enter into that spiritual worship. We can choose to do it. We can choose to miss out or we can choose to march in. And so we have to make that choice. And he says when we worship in spirit and in truth, we have to decide what truth. You know, there's a lot of people say, well, that's their truth. There's only one truth. Let's look at what the Bible says about truth. What does he say? The Bible said that when Jesus stood before Pontius Pilate in John 18, 37, 37 and 38, he said, everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Did he not say in John 10, my sheep know my voice? They recognize me. And this is what Pontius Pilate said. Pilate said unto him, what is truth? He didn't know what truth was. Now here was a man that was educated in the Roman government. He was educated. He was a powerful governor. He was a powerful soldier, a ruler. He commanded a lot of things. And then when Jesus, the truth, (laughs) the life, (laughs) <laughs> the Word in flesh stood before him. He was looking at the truth. And he just told him, he asked him, he said, are you king? Are you, the, are you a real king? And he said, I came that they may know that I might confirm the truth. And that's why he said, what is truth? In other words, I don't accept that. I don't believe that. But he said this. He said this. He said, everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. He said, he heareth my voice. You can't tell me born-again Christians are not hearing God's voice. But here's the thing. You got to obey the voice of the Holy Spirit. You'll hear a lot of voices. But those that are spirit-born will hear his voice. And we still have to say, I'm going to shut down all the other voices that are trying to interrupt and distract me, and I'm going to focus on His voice. And His voice said, I'm worthy of your praise. I'm worthy of your worship. I'm worthy of your obedience. Follow me, he that taketh not up his cross and denieth himself and followeth not after me, is not worthy of me. That's his voice today. So I have to make a decision to go after him, and I have to do the same thing in worship. I have to go after God in worship. I have to hear the truth. What does the truth tell me about worship? The Bible says, Jesus prayed, sanctify them through thy truth, John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. And then he could have left us hanging there, but he said, thy word is true. He wanted us to know. He, want, he, he, he said those things so that we would know what is truth. Thy word is truth. And so we have to accept the truth. And the truth says, Jesus, how many know it's not just a book? The truth is not just a book, but it's Jesus. He is the truth. Jesus, this is what he said, the true worshipers shall, what did the truth say? The truth said the true worshipers shall worship me in spirit and in truth. And when that's done, the goodness of God's heart is manifested. How can this happen? You can tell it when we cross over from the flesh into the spirit realm. And the goodness of God is being poured out. Let's talk about The goodness of God, how good He is. First of all, the Bible said Jesus called the Spirit the Spirit of truth, John 14 and 17. The Spirit of truth. So listen, Jesus is the truth. He gave us the Spirit of truth. He gave us the Word of truth, the power of truth. And He said, sanctify them 
by thy truth. He said, sanctify them through thy, through thy truth. The word there means consecrate, which means to declare something sacred. Why am I clean? Why am I sacred to God? Because His Word declares. Why am I called a child of God? Because His Word declares I am a child of God. If I believe and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, and I accept the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior, and believe that God raised Him from the dead, and believe it with all my heart, He said, you shall be saved. The Word's declared it. He's declared my spiritual birth in His Word. So the truth has declared you and me sacred people. It's not because we deserve it. It's by His righteousness through faith in His name. We're not saved. We can't save ourselves. How many know that? You know you can't save yourself. We're saved by grace through faith. It is not of our works. And I'm saved because he declares when I accept Jesus as king of my life and Lord of my life, you shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the Lord, he declares it in his word, shall be saved. So when I call upon him, he's declared me saved. Jesus declares that by his word, all right? And so it's the spirit of truth. He's he's made a declaration of truth over your life. Because God has declared it and decreed it over your life, you believe it. You have to believe it. You have to receive it. If you don't receive it, it will not have an effect upon your life. But if you believe it and trust His Word of truth over your life, you can be saved. And you can be Spirit-born. And you can be Spirit-filled, Spirit-baptized. You can operate in the gifts that the Spirit will deliver to your life. The Bible says He delivers them, He imparts them severally as He will. But let me tell you something. The Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is planted. The gifts of the Spirit are gifts. He just gives them to you. But the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of gentleness is planted by God in our life. And so there is a growing season for it. It matures, it grows, it increases. And as we yield to God and walk in the Spirit and let Him control our lives, the Bible tells us that that will grow and grow and grow. So this is is what He is telling us. The more we worship in the Spirit, the more the fruits of the Spirit will be manifested and grow and increase in our worship. Now, I want you to look at the goodness of God, the gentleness of God, the kindness, gentleness, kindness. And it also means goodness by definition. Romans 3 says, and it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all going to, out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. Uh, and there is none that doeth good. That word there is krestotes. It's, you can't do good. You can't do krestotes because without God, you're left to your own way, to your own ability. God gives us this ability when He gives us His Spirit. And so that's what he's talking about, a person that is not born of the Spirit, does not have the Spirit of God living in his life. And so therefore there is none in that condition that can do good. Notice he said doeth good. So it is not just a feeling. Gentleness is not just a feeling. Christotes is not just a feeling. It's not just a, a good feeling. It is actually the power of God manifesting the fruit of the Spirit in our life that actually begins to cause us to do what we could not do, to do good. He says, there is none that doeth good, but now the Spirit-born people are on the planet Earth through Jesus Christ, and they have the power of the Holy Ghost to do good, not in their own goodness, not in their own ability, but through the power of the fruit of the Spirit called Christos, that is, gentleness in our English word. So when we worship, when our worship transforms 
into spiritual worship, that's when we are at our best. When we are worshiping in the Holy Ghost. When we are doing what the truth says we are supposed to be doing. And when we agree with the truth, you are a worshiper. You are a child of God. You are saved. You are washed in the blood. You are a house of the Holy Ghost. You're the temple of the Most High Spirit of God. You've got to understand that you are not like everybody else. You are a child of the King. He has declared that over your life if you've been born again. And we are to worship Him as born again saints of God in the Spirit Listening to what he has called us. Now, there's a lot of people that will talk you out of worship. The devil will talk you out of worship. You, the ad, the endemic nature in you, those voices will talk you out of worship. But Jesus said, the true worshipers shall worship me in spirit and, and in truth. God is a spirit, he said. And he said, they that that worship me will worship me in spirit and in truth. And God seeks for those who will worship me in spirit and in truth. And so when you look at the goodness of God, you see that without his spirit, our worship is impotent, powerless, it goes nowhere. It don't get beyond the roof. You hear me? It don't go beyond the, the ceiling. Flesh, worship, don't, get, don't go any higher than you can hear it. But let me tell you, there's something when the children of God cross over into the Spirit. We say, I'm going to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Adam's not going to control me. I'm going to let the Spirit of God, the last Adam, control me. I'm going to allow His Spirit to control me and manifest His presence, and I'm going to worship Him in the Spirit and in His powerful Word, the truth. The Bible tells us when that happens, people get saved. Listen to what the goodness of God does. Notice Paul calls it goodness. He calls this gentleness, Christotes, goodness, in Romans 2 and 4. Despisest thou the riches of his goodness, that's the word, and forbearance and long suffering. Notice he is mentioning the fruits of the Spirit there. Forbearance, you know what forbearance is. We talked about it last week. It's God doesn't just, when I do something wrong, he doesn't just let a bolt of lightning come down and hit me in the top of the head and just take me out because I have sinned or I have failed him. Aren't you glad he's not that kind of God? <laughs> But God is long-suffering us were, not willing that any should perish, but he's given people time to understand his intent that all should come to repentance, all right? That's forbearance. So he's saying, he's saying this, despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long-suffering. The word forbearance is another word to reinforce his long-suffering, his patience with us in far as judging us and, and dealing with our sins immediately. He gives space for repentance. He gives space for us to, to see our, our, our rebellion and our, our wrongdoing and, and make it right through repentance and, 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 and confessing our sins to God and believing Him and coming back to Him again. He says, not knowing, not knowing people that despise God's goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, are not knowing, not know, they don't know this. They don't know this. I want you to mark that in your mind. They don't know this. They don't know that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Now, listen, I've been talking about when you cross over into the spiritual realm of worship as true worshipers who worship God in spirit and truth, something absolutely heavenly happens. People that despise God, despise everything I've said, despise, call you hypocrites. Don't believe it. They'll get in the atmosphere of true spiritual worship and they not knowing that God is good, all of a sudden, the goodness, the, the gentleness of God, the cretotes of God, this will be manifested in that worship 
And the Bible says that that goodness, that crestotes of God, the fruit of the Spirit, begins to lead them to repentance. They hadn't been thinking about changing their ways. They hadn't been thinking about repenting. But when the saints of God began to cross over in the spiritual realm of worship, there's a manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit. And there's a manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit. And all of a sudden, they start feeling the goodness of God. And they begin to be led. They don't even know what's happening. But all of a sudden, they're thinking about, wow, I didn't know God was good. I feel His goodness. I feel Him drawing me. God is good. And He said, the the goodness of God leads people to repentance. So when we worship it's powerful because people get saved when we worship God in spirit and truth. That's why the church has got to get back to worshiping God in spirit and truth. They've got to quit walking in the academic nature. They've got to come out of the flesh and get into it. We've got to get into the spirit. We've got to get into it in our walk, our daily life, our behavior. And we've got to get into it in our worship and not let Adam talk us out of who we are. The truth said, I'm a child of God. The truth said, the blood has cleansed me and I am qualified and sanctified. I am a sacred being to God and I am qualified as a true worshiper because the Spirit of God lives in this old temple. And I understand that and I start worshiping God. In spirit and in truth. Let's all stand together today. Aren't you glad of the goodness of God? It leads us where we need to go. It's the goodness of God. Otherwise, we don't know. We don't know. People that despise God just don't know Him. See, I don't despise God because I know Him. The Bible tells us that word also means God has good intentions. Well-meaning, it's benevolent. The word benevolent means he means well. He has good plans. Jeremiah 29, 11. He knows the thoughts. He knows the plans. He has not forgot about his plans. He's a forbearing God. He shouldn't have tolerated my sins. Oh, but he is so patient. He's so forbearing. He didn't give Randy what he deserved. He could have struck me down right there. I deserved it, but he didn't. You know why? Because he's not willing that I perish. That's his will. His intent was that everybody should come to repentance and be saved. Do you know that God wants everybody to be saved? He don't exclude anybody. Do you know that every prodigal that's left the father's house, every prodigal that's gone the wrong way, do you know that he wants every one of them back at home with him? I'm glad God is God, and I am not. I will even give up on myself sometimes. Have you ever gotten to the point that you are so frustrated, not with people, but yourself? You get frustrated with your own limitations and your own sins and your own failures. And, you, and, and look, if you listen to Adam, if you listen to Satan's voice, you know what he'll say? You're not qualified. God says the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. I've used that. Sister Nicole, I don't know how many times I've used that. When the devil comes and says, you're not called. You've messed up. God don't need nobody like you. You're not perfect. You're not perfect. And I, the Bible says, agree with your enemy. When he, when he says things like that, I say, you're right. I'm not perfect. But Jesus is perfect. Hey! And he has him put in his righteousness upon me. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. And I'm going to worship him in spirit and in truth. Because he didn't give up on me. He received Randy Rigney from a prodigal son life. I was as qualified as anybody that I know to live life better because I had so many chances to. But you know what? I didn't. I didn't. Oh, but thank God he didn't give up on me. 
That is the goodness and forbearance of God. That's the fruit of God. And when we worship Him, everybody gets introduced to that. What He has done in our life, all of a sudden, those that didn't know Him may even despise us, may even despise Him. All of a sudden, they become introduced. Man, God, He's a good God. He is not. He is not a bad God. He's a good God, and He wants to save me. And He'll take me just as I am. All i got to do is just give myself to Him. When the church crosses over into the spirit realm of worship, the fruit of God's goodness will be manifested. Not only sometimes we have to be reminded of it as His children, but also to the lost. I want the lost to be saved. How many know we are right there at the coming of the Lord? Don't, don't we know that? Boy, I'm telling you, if you don't know it, believe it we're at the very end of the last day but look God has still not come and we still got time and we're believing God that sinners will come that people that prodigals will return that people will be introduced to a loving God and to a God of goodness of good intent he's a benevolent God he mean, he has well meaning intentions and he has a well meaning life for us. That means it's gonna be good. If God is good, then he's got a good life for me. How many want somebody that you know to be introduced to that God? They don't know that kind of God. They think God's angry at him. He's not angry anymore. Jesus made peace with God through his the blood of his atonement. And now God is, 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 is showing His love and His grace and His goodness. The Bible said the Spirit of God is being poured out on all flesh. That means He's working in everybody's life. The undeserving, the people that may not be living for God right now, but they are Christians, the people that are prodigals, and the people that have never known Him, and they despise the things of God. The Holy Spirit is being poured out to work on them. Hey, and it's going to be by His power and revelation that they ever discover Jesus. They're not going to know Him through the flesh. they got to know Him through a manifestation of the presence of the Spirit. And when we worship Him in spirit and truth, they begin to feel something about God and from God in the presence of God that they've never felt before. And I want that in these last days because Jesus is coming soon. Let's pray. Lord, thank You that You have made us spiritual worshipers. God, I want you to help us worship God in spirit and in truth. I want you to help your people not listen to the things of the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. That's what gets us all. That's what we all come in contact and warfare with. But Lord God, let us, Lord God, shut those voices down let us walk because we live in the Spirit. We ought to walk in it and we ought to worship it. Change our worship. Change the level that we are worshiping. And let the fruit of the Spirit, which reveals the heart of God, the love, the joy, the peace, the long suffering, and the gentleness of our God. God, you're truly a, a good God. Lord, we thank you for it. Please let that happen. Lord, we need it. Our town needs it. Our families need it. Our communities need it. Our world needs it. Our nation needs it. Hallelujah. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Would you just give God a praise right now? The best one you got. We praise you. We praise you. We worship you, Jesus. If you got a need in your life, Right now, just raise your hand right where you are. Just raise your hand right where I got a need. I need God to do a work in my life. With several hands. Can you help me now, church? Lift these that have lifted up their hands. Lord God, some of these needs, Lord God, are desperate needs and urgent needs. God, needs that you know about and you care about. You're a good God. And Lord, you're a benevolent God. Your intentions, your plans, your will towards us. Is kind and good, long-suffering, is gentle. 
Hallelujah. And it's full of the love of God. That is your will for us. Lord God, right now, I want you to touch miraculously every need in this house. In Jesus' holy name, minister to every need. You said, my God shall supply all your needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That's the truth. We speak it over the people. We speak the truth over the people right now that have needs in their life. You said, shall supply your word. That's the truth. Lord, we lay hold on the truth. My needs shall be supplied according to His riches in glory. His riches in glory. Remember, saints, Paul said, the riches of His goodness and forbearance and long-suffering. God, you are full of riches and you're full of goodness. Meet our needs according to your riches and glory. God, we don't need, Lord God, our needs met by earthly and tangible things. We need heaven to get involved and riches from glory to get involved to move things to operate in our life. We're believing you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody shouted amen. Praise the Lord. How many like the blessings of God over their life? I want the blessings of God. We want them over our babies, our sweet little babies. You want, Mama, that blessing on your house and your babies, Daddy, Grandpa. We want the blessings of God to just be spoken over our life. This is what the Lord says. If you want to be blessed and hear what the Lord says over your life and over your children and children's children, let's just receive it this morning. I'm just going to read it right out of the Word of God. Stretch your hand this way. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make His face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. Ain't God good? (laughs) The Lord lift up His countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Oh, ain't God good, saints? The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. Everybody shouted amen. Oh, come on. One more time. Let's lift Him up. He's such a wonderful God. Thank you, Lord. You're dismissed. Thank you for coming.